basically before i show my presentation i must uh, correct a few things what the uh, professor sen gupta said uh, there are three corrections to be made actually i already have published a technical book which uh, contains uh, nine of my uh technical papers which were earlier published in a few national and international peer reviewed journals and that book has been quite popular and now it has been translated into eight major european languages and after the publication of that book uh three of my papers have already been published and one paper is on the anvil of getting published and i have not written eight or seven literary books i have written only six literary books and uh, yeah so my profession as far as i am concerned i am also a senior engineering professional and also an author and where i come from is although i am trained as an as a as a as a civil engineer but i also take lot of interest in uh, literature arts performing arts and uh, various other kinds of uh, intellectual pursuits so one of the things that has always fascinated me is interactive and uh, interdisciplinary learning and it is from that background that i am making this presentation on technology management creative and critical thinking because wherever technology and management are concerned in the corporate sector people we have to always deal with people and ideas so until and unless we are creative and critical in thinking we cannot handle technology and management in a realistic sense so now i will start my formal presentation and i intend to complete my presentation uh in a time span of 25 to 30 minutes and thereafter we can open the forum for some interactive discussion if somebody has questions i'll be glad to answer them now if you see the table of contents there will be an overview uh, then there will be a model of critical and creative thinking idea generation reflective judgment self regulation attitudes and dispositions a case study on the it industry in which i will cover how to think differently thinking about systems critical thinking in context and a critical approach why i uh, take the uh, example of america is because america is one of the brightest examples of uh, um interdisciplinary learning now in a recent report on skills of the american workforce the national center on education and economy stressed the importance of students gaining skills beyond mere content knowledge they state strong skills in english mathematics technology and science as well as literature history and the arts will be essential for many beyond this candidates will have to be comfortable with ideas and abstractions good at both analysis and synthesis creative and innovative self disciplined and well organized able to learn very quickly and work well as a member of a team 
and have the flexibility to adapt quickly to frequent changes in the labor markets as the shifts in the economy become ever faster and more dramatic. As such, uh, the National Educational Technology Standards for students emphasize creativity and innovation, communication and collaboration, research and information fluency, critical thinking, problem solving and decision making, digital citizenship and technology operations and concepts. Well, uh, one has to keep in mind that these standards are quite different than those established in 1998. But this is in the American perspective, which had the emphasis on basic operations and concepts, social, ethical and human issues, technology productivity tools, technology communication tools, technology research tools, and technology problem solving and decision making tools. In comparing the two versions of the technology standards, it is clear that the shift has been made from simply teaching students how to operate technology to using technology to encourage problem solving, innovation and collaboration. But how do we develop students who are critical and creative thinkers able to meet the challenges of 21st century thinking, learning and doing? For example, it was understood that to be creative, one must be clever. But what does it mean to be clever? And how can you teach someone to be clever? If we simply listed clever as a characteristic of a critical and creative thinker, what could an educator do with that information? Recognizing this issue, the goal of any relevant research is to practically define critical and creative thinking by identifying a set of specific skills that contribute, it, that contribute to such thinking and are teachable within any classroom. Now, we will try to look at a model of critical and creative thinking, we have come to recognize that critical and creative thinking is an integrated process that involves the generation and refinement of ideas around a core of knowledge. The idea generation and refinement processes are monitored and controlled by self-regulatory behaviors that involve goal setting, as well as monitoring the obtainment of those goals, all while maintaining the necessary attitudes and dispositions. The relationship between these processes is in no way linear. The continuous reciprocal relationship between idea generation and reflective judgment shows that there is no specific beginning or end to the thinking process. As ideas are generated, thinkers work with what they know and or want to know to refine their ideas until they have something of value and worth. The movement between generating and refining ideas involves thinkers using analytical and evaluative measures to focus their understanding of the content and developing an outcome that mostly clearly, comprehensively addresses 
the identified problem or need. As the thinker works uh, to generate and refine knowledge, it is vital that he or she remains in control of both behavior and commitment to a task. The self-regulation component of the critical and creative thinking process ensures that the thinker rema remains active in the thinking and learning process while monitoring, while monitoring progress toward identified goals. A critical component that encompasses all other processes is the exhibition of appropriate attitudes and dispositions, sometimes referred to as learner characteristics, the essential attitudes and dispositions of motivation, flexibility, and confidence have been shown to be necessary for the development of and continuous involvement in critical and creative thinking. Now, we will look at idea generation. A key, pro a key process of critical and creative thinking is that of idea generation. This is referred to as productive thinking, where the thinker engages in activities encouraging the divergent process of taking previously acquired knowledge, simple ideas, and new information and transforming those ideas into something that can be applied to a new situation or problem. The process of idea generation is supported by thinkers exhibiting skills such as fluency of ideas, originality of thought, and flexibility in thinking. Uh, now, we will discuss about the second part, uh, which is titled as uh, Reflective Judgment. Uh, in the reflective judgment component of critical and creative thinking, thinkers move through a convergent process of evaluating ideas and selecting a structured plan or solution based on the multitude of previously generated ideas. As they engage in reflective judgment, thinkers not only evaluate and select ideas from those generated through personal knowledge and experience, but also in the consideration of ideas gained through analysis and evaluation of other thinkers' ideas and resources. So by combining such ideas, thinkers will determine the best and most feasible plan to pursue. Now, what is self-regulation? Now, this is very important part, the third part, the self-regulation is very important. Throughout the processes of generating and refining ideas, thinkers must monitor and maintain control of their thoughts, behaviors, and involvement. The skills within this self-regulative process are organized by how the learners set personal goals and plan how they will accomplish their goals, monitor attention, focus and progress, and evaluate the process and results of their activities. Critical and creative thinkers engage in active planning and forethought to set goals, outline strategies, and determine the best methods through which they can achieve their goals. Activities that support this planning include recognizing the existence of a challenge, assessing personal knowledge, understanding one's own abilities, and allocating resources. Thinkers also must be skillful in monitoring the attention and focus they devote to a task, as well as the results of their decisions. This occurs through actively focusing on the level and type of attention required to accomplish the task. In addition, they need to be aware of how they're performing and progressing toward 
meeting their goals. Monitoring also involves identifying consequences of possible actions in relation to the desired goals. Revising, please concentrate here. Revising is a critical component of self-regulation. If through monitoring focus, performance, progress, and possible consequences, thinkers find that they are not making adequate progress toward achieving their goals, they must be willing to reconsider their course of action. As thinkers continually monitor their attention, focus, and results, it may become necessary for them to make changes in beliefs about the level of attention, abilities, and the value of contributions being made. This process of cognitive restructuring occurs as thinkers make affirmative changes in their overall attitudes and seek to make alterations in personal beliefs and perceptions of the beliefs of others. Thinkers can accomplish this restructuring by making positive self statements to help maintain awareness of such beliefs and make necessary changes. The third and final skill of self-regulation is the need for thinkers to evaluate the results of their efforts. This occurs as the thinkers review the initial challenge, their goals, and the resulting products. By evaluating results, thinkers can ensure appropriate outcomes as well as value and worth of, and worth of ideas as they relate to the problem or context. Through evaluating the process in which they engaged, critical and creative thinkers ensure that appropriate thinking processes were used to generate results. Through evaluating the product, they ensure that those final results are in line with the initial goal. Now we will come to uh, attitudes and disposition. Uh, in addition to engaging in idea generation, reflective judgment and self-regulation, critical and creative thinkers must exhibit certain attitudes and dispositions. Specifically, this means they must be perceptive and flexible, motivated and confident. Thinkers maintain a perceptive and flexible attitude through avoiding impulsivity, rejecting stereotypes and prejudices, embracing multiple points of view, judging their assumptions, and remaining sensitive to the thoughts and actions of others. In addition, it is vital that thinkers allow many aspects of experiences to penetrate and influence their thinking by remaining open-minded to seeking alternative influences. Tolerating ambiguity is also essential, as with any thinking process, vaguely established ideas will often penetrate their thinking. Critical and creative thinkers must be motivated to solve the problem at hand. They must exhibit a general interest in their learning, recognize the value of their participation, and see the applicability of the task to their personal interests. This motivation is exhibited through demonstrating autonomy, persisting at the task, maintaining intrinsic motivation, and recognize the relevance of their work to their personal interests. Successful criteria and creative thinkers are also confident in their involvement and position within the problem or context. Um, in this context, Confidence involves maintaining a posit positive perception of self-efficacy, exhibiting a high level of comfort in interacting with the thinking process, and exhibiting a general feeling of self-worth and certainty. Thinkers who do not fear being different and do not seek conformity 
are able to maintain high levels of confidence and become active participants in the critical and creative thinking process. Throughout, successful critical and creative thinkers demonstrate confidence by actively identifying the worth or applicability of their ideas, exhibiting courage of convictions that allows them to publicize their thoughts without fear of rejection and the willingness to engage in the risk taking that allows them to work outside their comfort zone and engage in tasks in which success is not certain. Now, we will briefly look at a case study uh, that is the IT industry. Uh, uh, Now, a criticism often, um, um, one sec, this waiting over is coming. A criticism often leveled at IT education is that by the time you come to apply the skills, they might be out of date. Why learn technology skills when that technology might not be used in a couple of years. IT does change fast, but the fundamentals of how we design and build systems change at a slower pace. As long as we learn about today's technology in the context of how it relates to the business world and how it is likely to evolve, then we will be in a much better position to respond intelligently to the changing world. Uh, here you can uh, compare your uh, uh, conventional traditional surgery with robotic surgery. The transition from uh, traditional conventional surgery to robotic surgery is something very similar to what we are talking in the second paragraph of this, present, of this page of the presentation. But this is often overlooked by both formal and in-house training programmers, which have favored skills which address very specific challenges. In order to be adequately prepared to tackle tomorrow's technology challenges, we need to move from a mindset of knowing how to apply technology to well understand situations, under, sorry, to well understood situations to one of being able to think critically about problems and identify solutions to unknown as well as familiar technology issues. To prepare IT professionals for the rapidly changing world of technology, we need to install an approach based on critical thinking. I will look at how we might do this before putting this approach in context. Now, the organization you work in is complex, including the kind of institutes that one studies in. It is shaped by the nature of individual thinking processes, as well as the existing technology and business pressures. Any changes will have causes and consequences that may have a much wider impact. Solving a problem will change things which could lead to other problems. Different people see different priorities. There is sometimes no obvious answer or many different reasonable answers, but there are also wrong answers which can be pursued sometimes at great cost. These often result from a very narrow focus on the problem out of context. Interconnections are too often ignored, a single cause may be presumed or an individual quickly blamed. Now, this is not exclusive to IT. We see this in wider society all the time. It's easier to blame crime on individual criminals led some to criminality. The other mistake is a focus on outcomes. That is, how many criminals can we arrest rather than how many crimes can we prevent. To avoid these mistakes, 
problems should be approached by thinking about the systems that affect the challenge or opportunity. This is more difficult than isolating and addressing a problem, but ultimately more likely to produce a better solution. As well as looking at how technology works, it is necessary to think about how people will react to it. Is a great, is a, is a great new technology too hard to learn? Will tough new security procedures incentivize people to circumvent them? We need to understand the systems in which new technology operates. Cognitive mapping is a technique for understanding and shaping the mental models your stakeholders use to perceive, contextualize, simplify, and make sense of otherwise complex problems. Thinking through these will help ensure new technologies and programs have the results they're supposed to. However good your plan is, you won't foresee everything. So it is also critical to continuously test and review and feed that learning into your ever evolving plans. Throughout the life cycle of any project, topics such as stakeholders, finance, risk, people, project administration, and quality must be constantly reviewed in the context of the project. The world of the future will require more understanding of flexible management. We will have to place more emphasis on learning as we go and making sure that learning changes our practice and organizations, we need to get used to this. Uh, so, yeah, now we discuss about... Link the Link Uh, now we discuss about uh, uh, critical thinking. Two core skills. Uh, I think some people are in the waiting room. Just let me see. Uh, Critical thinking in context, uh, two core skills of any modern IT professional are cybersecurity and software engineering. Both relate to complex real world challenges and can only be dealt with effectively if they think critically. Firstly, cybersecurity. Any IT professional needs to fully explore the available security technologies and stay up to date with them but they also need to think through the risks that may arise in all relevant aspects of an organization's operations, which may impact security, including human factors, web services, and system upgrades. You also need to be able to plan for when things do go wrong. Again, this needs an understanding of attackers' motivations and employee weaknesses, as well as of the technologies available to circumvent your defenses and a sense of how these, uh, uh, how these could evolve. It also requires an understanding of the legal frameworks and technologies relevant to digital forensics, which are essential when responding to cybersecurity incidents. Only then can effective plans be made. Teaching all this, uh, teaching all this must be put in a real world context. Most students learn these techniques by crafting a fit for purpose information security management system 
for the organization where they work. Secondly, software engineering. Contact between the business and the external world is often mediated by software. And the business has a responsibility. Uh, mm, let me just allow people to join because I'm the host. Um, where, where do you? Hmm? Teaching all this must be put in a real world context. Most students learn these techniques by crafting a fit for purpose information security management system for the organization uh, where they work. Secondly, software engineering. Contact between the business and the external world is often mediated by software and the business has a responsibility to its wider community that may be served or jeopardized by the software. Skilled software engineers can add a lot of value by creating or adapting software from managing projects and sales, analyzing performance and customer data and automating tasks. All of these exist in a complex real world where humans react to change in different ways. Any new system must understand how users or customers will respond to it. The skill is not one of knowing uh, how to do this. It is one of knowing how to model the relationships between the software, the organization it serves, and its wider environment. But this approach must be used in development, rollout, updates, and maintenance. It is an evolving process. Critical thinking doesn't mean ignoring technology, of course. The process can be evolved further by an understanding of different software engineering tools that can help them stimulate, manage, and monitor. Using this effectively, using these effectively is part of the skill of good IT planning. IT is critical to business and will become ever more so. Um, it exists in an increasingly networked and interconnected world where groups, teams, organizations and even nations will have to be smarter in their ways of working together. IT professionals therefore need to be able to think in ways that reflect these challenges. IT education at all levels must teach how to take a critical approach which relates technical competencies to complex technological, human and business issues. Thank you so much for giving me a patient hearing. Um, I think now we can um, open the um, session for an interactive session and uh, Mr. Shengupta, you are muted. I think I'm audible now, right? Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, thank you so much. But anyway, we'll, uh, so the questions will be coming. So I would request uh, all the uh, attendees the who are here, any question that you have, you must be having. It's a very, I mean, uh, subject that needs real deep thinking. So I request all of you to, uh, uh, think over it and any question that you have, you may have kindly put it to Mr. Shavon Roy. This is something he has been talking about okay. critical thinking, Enable the chat because he is the host. I can't technology hear. management, critical thinking, but at the same time, you may ask other questions as well. He has been in the industry for quite some time. He has been with uh, Electro Steel Castings itself for 25 years. 
so you can well understand his uh, the wisdom that he has gained over all these years so kindly i think any question that you put up any prefer, not only to the topic that he has talked about but other profession questions are also welcome mr roy am i right yeah yeah any question one can ask yeah, any professional because we team. are uh, you see we are discussing about interdisciplinary yeah uh learning and thinking for how to build up your own career from scratch everything is quite welcome so yeah okay i'll i'll start the question <laughs> dance session okay so the, my question is in some place you had uh, said about the create uh, while discussing the creativity of any person the person needs to be clever uh, if i am not wrong i think that's what uh, you had uh, said in the initial stage of the presentation now is it cleverness or is it intelligence you know how do you say that i mean because intelligence will uh, talks more about the <coughs> intellectual part the knowledge intellectual part and cleverness uh, is something that it, it can also be uh, construed as cunning so it's not i don't think so uh, what you mean is cunning no uh, can you please explain i mean yeah you see uh, i'll tell you something that uh, in the uh, old business schools of the 70s and 80s uh, creativity was often equated with cleverness all right now what you would actually mean by cleverness is a combination of intelligence smartness uh, having a higher intellectual quotient and all that but today as businesses have become more complex more integrate intricate more networked and integrated you need not smart and only intelligent uh, professionals you need uh, creative and you need uh, critical thinkers to be able to apply yourself to people and idea related issues who will make innovations at the workplace you see today all i come from an engineering manufacturing company and engineering manufacturing companies all over the world uh, because of china realistically because of china has been working on very thin and low margins now to be able to survive in such cutthroat competition you need innovators within your system and how do you create innovators you don't create innovators by having a computer professional in your system you don't have innovators by having a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer or an it engineer in the system what you need is a person who can combine knowledge with imagination and intuition to come out with an innovative solution for all the problems that one is facing in the industry i hope i have been able to make my point clear right right in fact uh, really uh, the the angle that you showed us uh, personally i was not much uh, i did not think in that way right so i uh, it's the session is open to the forum the platform is open kindly the any question that you would like to ask anything that you have in mind regarding profession regarding whatever um, i mean the profession that you will be going into another year or, or another two years or so ha huh, there is a question uh, mr roy uh, our mr sumit says how does sorry one minute 
how does bias impact creative thinking i think it's i a, think uh, i think uh, you see there is a saying in english that nature avoids vacuum now because nature fundamentally avoids vacuum you are supposed to have some kind of a bias because you you have two uh, you have two critical things on which you depend on your genetics and your societal upbringing which creates certain kind of bias in your mind now it could be as i discussed i did not use the word bias i used prejudices but it needs some amount of personal training to be able to uh, move above move above your personal biases in being trying to be creative now i'll give you an example now uh, i'll give you an example by uh, a small social bias now we encounter lot of people in our civil society who have biases towards certain communities uh, certain castes certain type of color of skin now i think that with such prejudices or biases you are not going to be as uh, creative and as innovative in a industry like situation because in the industry you employ people from all kinds of sections of the society so if you hold a bias or a prejudice against prejudice against any community or for that matter any type of or kind of people you are going to underutilize them so it is very important and significant that you personally train to move out of prejudice and bias which your gene mapping and your societal training uh, throws at you until and unless you do that it will be very difficult for you to be um, creative i can give an example that some prejudiced people or creative people have been extremely creative like you see adolf hitler's uh, propaganda team had a lady called called leni rofenstahl now leni rofenstahl was an excellent filmmaker she made the uh, film on uh, munich olympics of 1936 where we know the incident of jesse wins now the point is uh, leni rofenstahl although she was a nazi a fascist yet she was very creative very intelligent very imaginative and a brilliant filmmaker in spite of all that you know she gets caught i have seen her films myself i appreciate her work but of course i don't uh, subscribe myself to nazi philosophy or the fascist philosophy she adheres to but you know she makes documentaries she makes propagandas but she has not been able to make a human story because of her biases and prejudices i hope i have been able to clear the question that was raised uh, thank you mr roy really i am sure the thing is uh, the, the point has been well explained there is another question uh, from one of our uh, students is after this pandemic situation or i can say from now on what are things an industry can expect from the management students i think uh, first of all nobody has seen the end of the pandemic as yet so i cannot say when the pandemic will end but one thing is for sure that uh, the pandemic because i am very active in the confederation of indian industries one of the things that the industry sector is very keen on is adapting industrial revolution 4.0 adapting artificial intelligence machine learning and integrate remote plants high degree of remote plants 
So one of the things that uh, I think industry will go through is gradually, not immediately, in the next four to six years, I think time from today, gradually industry will go through a tremendous amount of job fees. Only the best will be able to survive and I think uh, management students have to, why I made a case study out of the IT industry is also because of this that management of humans and the interface of humans with uh, robots, artificial machine learned robots will be one of the critical things that will be required in the four to six years time. Now, today, a few plants in India have robots, few plants in India have robots fed with artificial intelligence, that is robots which are machine learned, which are machines with which has uh, intelligent learning. So this interface is going to become very critical. So management institutes will have to address this issue of humans and robots, intelligent robots operating within the industry and this interface. And this is a new challenge for management industry as well. Right, thank you. Uh, I, I have a question before I go to other questions that are already there. Uh, I, will, I would just like uh, you to explain uh, the, uh, the, the similarities and dissimilarities between idea generation and reflective judgment. You see, idea generation and reflective judgment is, are two different processes that comes one after the other. The initial stage is the idea generation, whether the idea, when the idea generates inside your mind and it takes shape, certain kind of shape, and only then you are able to reflectively judge on the idea that is formed in your brain. So these are not similar processes. These are dissimilar processes. Dissimilar, yeah. Comes one after the other, but integrated in a process. Right. Okay, there's a question. As we know, due to COVID-19 situation, we are more depending on technology. So according to you, what are technological skills the industry wants from uh, management student? I think partly you have covered that, but you, yeah, you would like to add I something. Have covered this. Partly I have, I have covered this and uh, yeah, I think today management students uh, have to have some kind of understanding of um, industrial revolution 4.0 in not in general terms, but in very specific terms. And uh, let's say, you see, ultimately, uh, you see, I'm a person from engineering manufacturing background. So I'll be able to tell you about my sector. In my sector today, as we are doing increasingly investing in more and more automation, like a process which took eight hours, our target is to bring it down to 15 minutes, all right. Now, as you automate a process from eight hours to 15 minutes, there is a lot of investment towards mechanization. There is a lot of uh, investment towards uh, information technology. And the third stage is where you bring in machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I think uh, institutes like Calcutta Business School will have to have a very well laid out plan for understanding of, as I said earlier, what are the management issues involved with uh, uh, taking on very aggressive automation in Indian industries. Let me tell you today, yeah, there are certain good things that the cost of operation in China is increasing day by day because of which India can breathe a bit and businesses are also going away from China, but businesses are not coming to India. 
they are either migrating to Vietnam or some other countries. So what I'm trying to tell you is India will, in India, the engineering manufacturing sector will require management uh, students who are not only good at people issues, who are not only good at sales and marketing and financial uh, analysis issues, but also good at the interface between humans and humanoids, that is the intelligent machines. Right. Thank you so much. Another uh, question is there. Uh, it's, I mean, maybe a partly done, in, but anyway, the direct question, how to develop adaptability or how to... Actually, I find this question very good, you know. I was a bit... Uh, yeah. Right. I was a bit uh, surprised when you skipped this question because, you know... No, no, I wanted us, this question at a later date, yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, something we studied in Newtonian mechanics is the law of inertia, all right? If you are in motion, you want to be in motion. If you are at rest, you want to be at rest. So we don't want to change our original position, all right? Now, if you are a Marxist, you always look down upon non-Marxists. You are a non-Marxist, you always look down upon Marxists. So there is a kind of a situation, non-flexibility in all of us. The Newtonian law of inertia works in all of us. Now, I personally feel that you, you, you actually grow adaptability as you see and experience more cultures and that is possible by traveling. Okay, traveling today is a, a bit uh, of a difficult proposition because of various other kind of restrictions, but traveling, reading books, uh, because by reading books, you get to know about other cultures, other kinds of people by traveling, uh, you get to know about so many things, other kinds of food, other fine kind of food cuisines, so you know that there are kinds of people who exist who are different from you. It is important to understand that very different kinds of people exist in our civil society all across the world, even within our community. I think that develops adaptability skills and that develops, first you see to be, adapt, to be adaptable, you must develop respect for difference. Only when you develop respect for difference, only de then you would be able to have adaptability skills. As I said, I'm not a fascist or a Nazi, but I thought I must watch Lenny Rolfenstahl's films for the simple reason that there is something to learn from her. Yeah, knowing you from... Uh... Uh, from whatever I know you as, I think you are also a film buff. So I was pretty surprised that you did not say uh, talk about films uh, apart from traveling and reading books. So lastly, you yeah, touched course, upon that. When I said actually, when I meant arts, I actually meant movies as well because people today have so much of access to various kinds of streaming sites that all the youngsters who are in this group must be watching Netflix or movie.com or Hotstar yeah. or whatever, all the kinds of other things that exactly. yeah. one has. So they have the experience of various cultures per se. Right. Uh, there's a question uh, uh, I'll tell you just now from, uh, from Dr. Shubhendu Mujumdar, a faculty member here, my colleague. Uh, Please give your valuable thoughts on practice of cognitive mapping that is relevant to work as a professional and how the same extends support uh, us in creativity. You see, uh, one of the things that I keep on saying in a, in a few days back, uh, a journal had interviewed me for tips on creative students in schools. I think one of the way to 
cognitively map uh, to map your cognitive process is to externalize your thoughts whatever comes into your mind must be externalized by way of writing it down jotting it down in a journal or a diary of thought events now once you can look at your thoughts very clearly can you map them you integrate some you see the dissimil the, the magnitude and the difference of uh, dissimilarities and similarities between various thought strains can be understood now this is something which i can profess because this is something which i do myself and this is applicable to both the professions that i pursue as a uh, as an author as well as a, a senior engineering professional whatever comes to my mind i have a way of mapping them down by externalizing my thoughts and understanding the the, the degree of similarities and dissimilarities between various strains of thoughts and then integrating and dissociating them now i think this makes you exponentially creative and this one thought process leads to other thought processes and you could make a quantum jump in your mind uh, from one idea to the other right thank you uh right there's a question uh, in such a difficult situation the company what what is expected from an employee between hard working and smart working well uh, personally i don't find any you see these are coinages of terms um, i think fundamentally whatever you are doing even if you are drinking a glass of water uh, you should be doing it sincerely because otherwise the glass will fall down or and break into pieces so whatever work you are doing uh, you should be doing it hard enough and smart enough these are coinages of terms but uh, you know the employer would uh, expect you to work um, very um, sincerely honestly and with the utmost dedication that you can okay there is a question on ductile pipe industry but before that i would like to ask you a question on in self regulating while evaluating the process one can stick with multiple failures which often leads to losing hope so what do you suggest to keep on with the focus and motivation so in case of failures without now i could not hear you professor shengupta i, I could said, not hear you professor shengupta can you yeah, come i i I'll, i'll do that i'll repeat the question uh, in self regulating i said while evaluating the process there could be multiple failures that may lead to demotivation or losing hope so what do you suggest to so that the person keeps on focus and moti- and uh, gets the motivation i think it is to do with our genetic structure uh, in the same circumstance that you and i may be facing um you could remain very positive but while i could be depressed mm-hmm. so genetics i keep on saying plays on a very important role in our day to day life and to say about to talk about failures i must tell you failure is something which is going to dissipate your energies whatever your age or experience is but you know to be able to learn from your failures take some amount of gray hair on your head okay so i think time is the big, biggest leveler in these cases young people are going to bound to get uh, dissipated by uh, the way 
they see failure. I can give you a personal example of mine. Uh, my son was a very good chess player at one point in time, but you see one of the great difficulties he had was he could not face uh, defeat. Every time I would say that the fundamental reason why we all engage in sports is to learn how to get defeated gracefully. Because sports is one thing that teaches us to get defeated gracefully. That is the biggest learning of life. Now, at the age of 14, he did not understand this very well. Today, he has gone back to chess. He gets defeated three times in a day. He wins a game four times in a day, but it doesn't make much difference to him. So what I'm trying to tell you is today he is 25 years of age. So it, it took him 11 years to understand that, yes, it is important to get defeated at a game to be able to learn its skills better. So, you know, it, it happens with time. Time is the greatest leveler. However, we might uh, give lectures to our younger generation that take defeat gracefully and all that. But I think there is the right time for everything to come. But yeah, we have to keep on saying and one has to face failures because you would not have a proverb that failures are the stepping stones to success if, you, uh, if this was not the case. Yeah, there's a question. The ductile pipe industry has a lot of competition and as the demand is reduced due to the pandemic government, uh, one of the clients of ductile pipe industry, how will you, how will ductile pipe industry regain that demand? I don't know whether it has I lost. I think I will uh, correct your perception. You see, the pandemic has not reduced the demand for uh, uh, ductile air and pipe industry. You must know that uh, the um, one of the flagship programs of the Prime Minister of the country is Jaljeevan Mission. So there is a lot of funds being pumped into Jaljeevan Mission uh, and Jaljeevan Mission is a project which is jointly funded by the central government and the state government. So Jaljeevan Mission is uh, being very aggressively focused on by the central as well as the state governments. And as such, on the demand side, we do not have any, um, any, shortage, any shortage. So uh, frankly speaking, uh, um, ductile iron pipe industry has not suffered from demand issues. Yes, no, there has been a uh, reduction in the irrigation sector, industrial sector, but wastewater sector is improving. Um, the, the, the water supply sector, the municipal water supply sector is increasing. So it is wrong to say that the ductile iron pipe demand has gone down. It has not gone down. Right. So I would uh, request you to throw some light on flexible management from my side. This is a question from my side. So you had been uh, one of the uh, slides you men mentioned about yeah, flexible management. See, uh, so, which I mean, is also, uh, yeah. yeah flexible management also, you see, large companies are going to have very structured uh, systems in place. Yet, you know, while dealing with various kinds of, I'm just giving you an example. While dealing with, within the regime of that structured principle, you know, you will have different kinds of people uh, when, uh, to whom you will have to transport this regime of a structured and a very disciplined and a very scientific um, system in two different ways. So I think uh, you have to be flexible. Like, let's say, I'll give you very easy examples. Now, you have a TADA rules in the company, all right. Somebody will say that, you know, I can't operate within these TADA rules because this is so less 
I want to stay in a more comfortable place. I don't feel safe or I don't feel comfortable enough staying in this kind of a hotel or, or likewise. While in a team of maybe 30 people, only one person like that says. So it's not as if that you tell him that no, just because it is a company rule, you have to do that. You, you transport him the meaning and somewhere, you know, you trade off considering what kind of a, what kind of a, what I, sh what should I say? What kind of a, a person or what kind of a value he adds to the company? So I think uh, these things, you have to be flexible. You have to be flexible with people. You have to be flexible with ideas. You have to be flexible with budgets. Everything you have to be flexible with, considering that you are operating. You see, we have not uh, transported all of us to a complete humanoid kind of a situation. All right. That we are working with robots where every, we go, we go every day we go wrong in our budgets. All right. We make a budget where let's say we, for a specific project, we will approve, get a budget approved of 6.2 lakhs. And then we end up spending 6.35 lakhs. So we will have to have a certain kind of flexibility and understanding. But while we do that, we must know why we are doing that. We should not be doing it uh, in an anarchic way. Right. Uh, you also said about, uh, while talking about technology management, you talked about something like open manage, uh, open mindedness. So how does it really help in influencing your decision? You see, if you are not open minded, if you are not, uh, if you are not, uh, wanting to take the opinions of others, uh, and if you insulate from the ideas of others, uh, you are not being uh, creative in the first place at all. A creative person never operates on what he or she thinks only. Uh, that's a, that's a very, uh, very, uh, I would say dictatorial way of uh, authoritarian way of operating and working while in certain decisions, you have to be like that. But at the same time, it is very significant to understand that in a complex world and then in an integrated world, you have to operate with the ideas of so many other people. Now they could be juniors, they could be seniors, they could be your colleagues at your own level. So every day you learn on any idea or any idea that you are pursuing. And so you should be open, but as a team leader, you should also know, that since the responsibility and the uh, lies on you, uh, how to, you see, you have to take along the entire team along with you when you execute a decision. So in executing a decision, it is open. It is important that you accept all points of view, evaluate all those points of view threadbare. So here, you know, the political structure of democracy operates very fine. Now, if you insulate yourself from others' opinion, it would not be it would not be a, a good practice at all. I would say it would not be a professional practice at all, and I don't think any good professional manager does that. Okay, like right. at your home, at your home, you don't do things uh, just because uh, you think it that way. You have to be. Take your family into confidence before executing exactly. a decision. Similarly, uh, in your office or in your organization or your at your institute, you take the views of everybody. Yeah, right. Uh, fine. So another uh, question: uh, If you had to choose between uh, smart working and uh, working creatively. Uh, what would you choose and why? I mean, I would choose creatively working. So, Mr. Roy can answer that. I, I can. Like I will, of course, second you, Professor Sengupta, that I would always, always, and always go for a creative person instead of a smart person. Because for the simple reason that a creative person can always be smart later on, but only a smart person 
can hardly be creative at a later date. There's a question, uh, as a general question, uh, which are the Indian industries which are undergoing a change in terms of employment? So, uh, uh, employment you see, that... I can tell you something, I can tell you something that in white collar job, in white collar job, uh, there are not much changes in terms of employment. I can tell you this. But yeah, as far as uh, employment opportunities are concerned, employment opportunities are going down, especially in the eastern part of the country. Uh, comparatively, you have better opportunities in the western and the southern parts of the country. Unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I'm saying in the eastern part of the country, we don't have so much of growth, industrial growth, um, so to say. But Changes in terms of employment is not happening for white collar stuff. No, I don't see, at least in our organization, we are not doing any such thing. And as far as I know, because I am very active in the Confederation of Indian Industries, CII, um, I don't find that there are much changes there as well. Right. Uh, okay, I think, uh, uh, any other question? My students, you know, as I told you, the questions have always been very intelligent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have been very good and yeah, very interactive. Very intelligent. And I so, would, uh, uh, um, you have a beautiful campus, Professor Sengupta, someday after the pandemic is over. Uh, I would definitely like to come over and interact uh, more with your so students after, physically. Uh, and stay one forward. night, as I've always told you, stay one night at Calcutta Business School and uh, enjoy your hospitality. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We are we are looking forward to your presence here. Just yeah. the, the situation is such that we're not able to organize, but definitely we'll have that. Right. Yeah, yeah. So please do... Uh, be here. I mean, uh, any other, if there will be no question, so I would like to thank Mr. Roy. Uh, thank you so much. For taking off time from his schedule. Oh, it was fact, such a pleasure you know, interacting with all of you. Yeah, I understand that because I know that uh, a person of your stature would, uh, uh, I mean, any uh, assignment of such, your uh, fees would be pretty high. I don't want to <laughs> quote that. So, but uh, that you have come down without, uh, I mean, uh, uh, just to interact with our students, it's really something uh, very good. We are so happy to have you here. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I would also, you know, I wanted to interact with all of you here on this because this is a presentation I made at uh, GIS and Tech2 India group also, and it was quite successful and the, and all the students and the children liked it. So I found that, why don't we do it here? Yeah. Because I'm going to take this presentation forward other places also, because I'm, I'm, right. I'm finding that there is a lot of hope in this kind of right. Right. thinking pattern. That's it, yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. But one thing I would like to tell you, I must apologize myself, because I thought I will introduce in an extempore manner. By, I did not keep the notes in front of me, so the, the today, publication, the number the of publications is, I missed. If you Google my name, uh, if you Google my name, you will know everything about me. So I have a Wikipedia page. I know page. that, I know that, but I thought I, I, I have a Wikipedia page also, that's not a problem. Okay. Introducing me is not an issue. Issue is, okay. you see, here the specific person, as far as I am concerned, is not important. We are interacting on ideas. That is more significant than a person interacting. Right, right. But only one correction I wanted to make about the United Nations is it's not that in a committee I'm joining. In fact, I have been offered a regular employment in United yeah. Nations as an international diplomat, as uh, their uh, environment program specialist. So I'm not joining any committee. So okay, I, maybe I, you know of the United Nations structure much better than me. So that's yeah, the way yeah. I think. But anyway, yeah. right. Yeah, okay. So I just want to okay. correct that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Roy, from thank our so side, on behalf thank of. You.
our director and other my faculty colleagues and others at Calcutta Business School. We look forward to meeting you in person here after the the situation improves. Definitely, we'd yeah, like definitely. to have you here. Definitely. Thank definitely. you so much. Thank okay, you. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank we you. take leave for the time being. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.